Cobb? Well, you know, I think we're we're looking really good with uh, with with Cueto and and Leak as far as health. They finished the year healthy. They made all their starts. Uh, Homer had the uh, the surgery in August. Uh, we're confident that he'll come to spring training, being very close to being ready to take the mound. Uh, and then we'll just have to see if we can get him ready uh, by opening day uh, to be ready to pitch on the uh, opening day roster. After that, uh, Tony Sangrani, I think, is going to be full go. Um, you know, he was able to spend uh, the second half of the season doing rehab for his shoulder, getting stronger, and start a throwing program. Uh, we're confident he'll be ready to go and, and healthy and, and ready to help us. And then uh, the Discofani kid uh, that we got in the trade with Miami, uh, we anticipate uh, being a factor as a candidate for our rotation as well, along with David Holmberg and Bryceel Iglesias, and uh, we also signed Jason Marquis and Dylan Axel Axelrod. So we have some candidates. It's going to be a competitive camp. Has Homer started to throw yet? He has. Okay. He has, and uh, he. I spoke with him the other day, and he says he feels great. He feels like he could do more than he's doing. But, you know, after these, uh, these surgeries, there's definite throwing protocols that, that, uh, that with our history with this and familiarity with this type of injury that uh, we try to follow. So we don't want to get him too far ahead on his rehab, uh, but right now there haven't been any setbacks. We can't anticipate a, a good spring for Homer. Ryan, a lot of pitchers got Richard this year. Uh, how does that affect your team with all the spending this offseason? Well, you know, we're that low mid-market club. Uh, from a payroll perspective, uh, we don't have the ability to compete with the teams that are making hundreds of millions of dollars in TV revenue uh, from a financial so standpoint. So we have to be smart with our decisions. And you know, the great thing about uh, the Reds here over the last four, five, six years is that we've produced a lot of good young players. That being said, they're all approaching free agency or, or, uh, or making a lot of money in arbitration. So it's hard to, to be able to give them what they deserve. I don't think anyone's trying to shortchange any of our guys. We'd like to sign them all. We'd like to give them long-term contracts and have them here in Cincinnati for years. That being said, we just don't have the financial wherewithal to do that. And it'll be a real challenge to get Johnny signed. What are some of the highlights of the caravan so far? And you haven't seen the, who's out there in Lima, but it must be fun to uh, get around and see all the Reds fans. Yeah, it's great. You know, the highlight so far is I just had my, my, my first uh, adventure with frog's legs. In Salina, so so we had a, a great platter, um, and that was a first time for me, which is great. But you know, it it really is an opportunity to connect with our fan base uh, and say thank you for the support more than anything. You know, we we, we uh, feel it at the ballpark. I mean, the the roots to this organization run deep, and we couldn't be any happier that the people are showing up to support us and support us throughout the course of the season. Brian, that we don't even need to discuss his health right now. He's healthy, swinging the bat, doing all of his baseball activity. He'll be 100 percent at spring training. And Joey has spent a good portion of his offseason having to do rehab first, baseball activity second, so he's being reintroduced to baseball activity now. So I'm going to, you know, absolutely give him as much as he can handle in spring training without overusing him. But I think by the time we get to April, that early part of April, he should be right back in a good groove and healthy and ready to go. Brian, what about this guy you got with you, uh, Mezzarocco? He's starting to look like a real building block for the future. He is, you know, the the uh, the unfortunate part of losing 86 games is uh, is that you lose 86 games. But the silver lining in, in a season like that was was the production, the productivity of uh, of Devin and, and Todd in particular, sitting in the middle of our lineup quite often at the three and three and four or hitting the two and four spots in our lineup, and they were impactful and they're, and they're guys that we can rely upon going into 2015 to solidify our lineup and really realistically one through seven we're going to be very strong with some very efficient offensive players uh, we're going to have a really good offensive pro pro run production guy hitting seventh whoever that ends up being and certainly can anticipate zach Co cozart getting a lot better and giving us more offense in, in, in uh, the eight hole talk about the two outfielders in center what do you expect from billy hamilton in year two and also what, how about, what do you expect from marlon bird over there in the left well, with Billy, it's you know so much for him is experience. It's learning the league. It's understanding what it takes to be strong and healthy through the course of a full season, a six-month season. Um, his defense showed up every day. His speed showed up every day. Uh, he's got to stay on top of his bunting and continue to be an efficient bunter and get more balls that are hit on hard, short, hard line, line drives and hard ground balls and get on base at a higher rate. Um, I think he's going to be a sensational player, no doubt about it. Uh, with Marlon Bird, you've got an experienced guy that comes with history. Not just history as a run producer, uh, but a history as, as a great teammate and a guy who plays the game the right way. He's going to help us defensively in left field. Uh, he's going to produce runs for us. and He's going to play the game the right way, which will continue to kind of uh, establish the message that we want, and that's to be a team that nobody wants to play. Outside, 
Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to getting back down to Arizona and, and working on a few things. But, you know, just go out there and continue to, to play the way that, that I played last year and the way that I know how. Uh, that's, that's really the main thing. What about the support you see on this caravan? What does it mean to you to go to all these different cities, see all the Reds fans out there? Yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, these big stops, we get so many people. Uh, and and it's, it's not even baseball season, you know. It's the middle of the winter. So, uh, you know, that Reds country is uh, definitely a, a far-fetching uh, area. So it, it's a good, uh, it's definitely a lot of fun to see all the fans. How's it been for you to watch all these pitchers get locked up these big deals? And what does that mean for some of your battery mates? Oh, well, it, you know, you see the, the, the numbers, and, and they're unbelievable, but uh, Johnny Cueto is just the pitcher as, as all these other guys, and Mike Leak is, is a very well-accomplished pitcher, up, uh, you know, and he's still a young guy. So I, I think it's definitely uh, an exciting time to be a good starting pitcher, that's for sure. Well, I think that is the highlight, seeing fans and getting the chance to talk to them, uh, try to answer their questions about what's going to happen this coming year, but... It's always great to have an opportunity to say hello to fans because, as we know, baseball is about the fans. We can say whatever we want about the players and whatever, but without the fans, wouldn't be much of a game. So uh, that's what makes it fun for me. Joe, what's your personal outlook for the Reds this year? Well, you know, I'm like everybody else. It's about health. You know, are we going to get if we get uh, you know a healthy Joey Votto back, Jay Bruce back, um, you know, Brandon Phillips? Those three guys are the key to the team, and if they're healthy, then we're going to be good.